All right, hello and welcome to Art Research Part 1. Before we begin, please take a moment to think about what do I plan to research for this class? And are there specific issues I've had researching art before? Hopefully we'll address some of those concerns, but if not, it's nice to have them fresh in your mind. Today, you'll meet the art librarian, that's me, discuss what is unique about art research and learn strategies to build keywords lists and learn some search tips. First of all, hello, my name is Mary Naylor Stevens. I'm the visual arts and design librarian. My bachelor's is in humanities, so art history adjacent, and my master's in science is in library and information science, which is how I got the job librarian. I wear a few other hats here at the UVU Fulton Library, but my favorite is working one-on-one -on -one with students and their research projects. You can message me or set an appointment to chat one-on-one -on -one using these links, but you can also talk to any librarian at the reference desk for most questions. These links just get you directly in contact with me. So first of all, art research, what makes it hard? Art research is a lot of back and forth searching for things that are very broad, like religion and art, and also very narrow, like the importance of a small item included as part of a specific piece. This means that you will be running a few extra searches than you may be used to. It also means that you have to do have a robust keywords list before you get started. Keywords, keywords, keywords. The best way to find stuff and save time. Students don't believe me, but this is a big way to save time. Having keywords listed before you start searching saves you oodles. You also can keep building on the list as you search. Keywords are going to be a lifesaver. So how do we build those keywords up? Step one, I need a topic. Um, I need to make sure it fits my assignment. If my paper needs to be a certain length, cover a certain location or time period or movement of art, I should keep that in mind. For this example, let's assume I need to write a research paper on a piece or compare a few pieces by an American artist from before 1940. The paper will be 10 to 12 pages long, so I should plan on needing 10 to 12 sources to be good enough to make it into my final draft. It's okay to start broad knowing I may narrow down later. I know I want to do research about the end of the 19th century for American art. That's my favorite. I think I may want to look at religion as part of it. I want to do a painting or a sculpture. I should brainstorm some relevant sub questions about my topic that will help me search. Once I pick a piece, sub questions may narrow stuff down for me. But right now I'm thinking about how does realism play a part in 19th century art? And do religious pieces keep or modify traditional motifs and depictions in this time period of American art? Are there any main ideas that could be keywords from the start? Right away I'm going to pull out religion, realism, art, and paintings. Step two, I need to read the piece once I pick one. I love Henry Osawa Tanner's Annunciation, painted in 1898. He's an African-American artist painting at the end of the 19th century. It is a traditional religious piece, but reimagined by Tanner, who did extensive research in the Middle East before doing the piece and met others like it. It fits my assignment as well as my broad questions. When reading art for research, I'm trying to find keywords, but I'm also trying to think through the piece and some other questions that may come up. For this piece, I want to start with what people, objects, and settings do I expect to see? I also may want to think about how is this traditionally depicted? Are there abstract ideas that I may want to keep in mind? Does this piece honor or change what I normally would expect from an enunciation piece. I expect at a minimum, Mary, Gabriel, something gardeny or floral, and something blue or maybe blue and red, which are traditionally Mary's colors. So do I see them? Uh, do I see Mary, 
Yes, there she is. What about the angel Gabriel? Yes, ish. Depicted for sure, but not a winged angel with gilded halo. A tower of light is different than I might expect. I may want to write down how are supernatural or religious elements or characters depicted in realist art. How is doubt depicted in art as sub-questions to keep in mind that might be relevant for my piece and my research. All right, next up is Mary in a garden. Not this time, it looks like she might be in a bedroom, but in the corner of her dresser, I do see a lily sprig, which is Mary's flower and is something floral. All right, do I see something blue? There they are, her blue robes, but it's a little different. She isn't wearing them. And honestly, this is my favorite part of this piece. Mary is in her jammies, and so her robes are off to the side in her chair. Now, I can promise I won't find a research article that says, isn't it so tender that Mary is depicted as a young lady in her jammy jams? But I may find something that talks about innocence, the importance of Mary's colors, and then I, the clever art student, bridges together for my reader, adding my interpretation that it is in fact tender in this instance that she's in her pajamas, but the blue is present. I want the research to support Mary's depiction in general, her colors and why they are important. And then I apply them to how they're being used in this piece. I may ask myself what other differences are there from some other famous enunciation pieces here, Mary is depicted as a young, dark-haired, and thin young woman, which is different. In other works, she looks seven months pregnant and is sagely gazing into the distance and often is a day-glow lily white. This darker, younger, not pregnant depiction is different. I should look for articles that discuss Mary's typical representation. I can then write about why it might be different in this piece. Bonus if I can find a source that talks about this specific Tanner piece, but it may not be necessary to find a pile of articles about this one. I can find other ones about similar or even articles about traditional enunciation paintings, and then I do a compare and contrast with my own reading of the piece. I may want to look into race in the 19th and 20th century art scene. Tanner was a racial minority in America and in the art world in general. The fact that he is depicting a darker skinned Mary may be important. It also plays into realism. After all, the Mary of the story is Middle Eastern. Orientalism could be a good topic to look into as well. Interest in the Orient, meaning the Middle East, was big in the 19th century. Does it show up in religious art, in realism? Can I find articles about Orientalism and religion or Orientalism and art? It's okay if you don't know all of this from the start, doing a quick read of a, the Wikipedia article about the piece or the artist or finding a museum page that talks about the piece and some background details can help you flesh out some of these ideas. So from here, I need to make some keywords and searches. My questions aren't keywords but they may have keywords in them. Remember, you may do a broad search like, quote, American art, quote, and realism to get a few articles, and then narrower a few searches to get more granular articles like Tanner and Annunciation. Basic searches that will be perfect for almost all projects have the structure of keyword one, the word and, and then keyword two. Possibly keyword one and keyword two and keyword three. Yes, actually type out and, but it doesn't need to be capitalized like I have on the slide here. It is good to have a mix of narrow searches and broad ones. Super broad searches like quote American art end quote will bring up books in our search. You won't have to read the whole book. Usually a chapter is enough but it will also bring up some unhelpful results because it is so broad. I have a few fancy search things happening in my possible keywords list. I'm going to read my keywords list and then talk about some of the fancy features. On my list, I have one quotation mark, American art quotation mark and realism, two, enunciation and painting, 
three, Tanner and Annunciation, four, Tanner and Orientalism, five, Madonna and Painting and Religion, six, Angel and American and Art, seven, Realism and Painting, eight, Orientalism and Religion, nine, Angel and Depict Asterisk, and art, 10, parentheses, flower or garden, parentheses, and art and motif. I'm using quotation marks when I want a specific phrase like American art that tells the database that not only do I want those two words to appear in the title or abstract, but I want them to appear in that order with no words between them. In this case, I could adjust it to be American and art. This would be a broader search and may bring back results like Donald Trump's The Art of the Deal. If the description of the book includes the word American, it would fit my parameters. I have an asterisk that tells the database, I care how this word begins, but not how it ends. So for my keyword depict asterisk or star, I will get results for depict, depicts, depictions, and depicting. Be careful to cut off the word late enough that you won't get extra results, but soon enough you will get the extra endings. A good example might be teen asterisk, so I'd get teen, teens, teenager. Using just R asterisk is not going to go well since most titles or abstracts will have a word that starts with the letter R. Three, I have an or. This tells the database. I don't care if flower or garden is my keyword one, but one of them needs to be present. It's essentially letting me run two searches at once. If you try something fancy in a search and it fails, try going simpler. Often the most basic searches are the most powerful. If you need help building a fancy search or just want someone to go over your searches, do not hesitate to email me. I'm happy to help. You can ask the librarian at the reference desk to look over your keywords as well. The reference desk is on the first floor of the library. You can call us at 801-863-8840. You can text us at 801-290-8123. You can also chat with us from the home screen of the uvu.edu slash library. You can also email us or set an appointment to meet with me directly. This concludes part one of research, art research topics and keywords. Look for art research part two for searching examples, my favorite databases, and some of my favorite searching tips and tricks.